good eve. This is our spring tournament. My name is Lego Frisbee, and joined with me in the booth today is Melee Wizard. How you doing, Melee? I thought you were named Lord Fizzlebeef. Did I get the? Did I, did I misread that? I mean, it's clearly labeled up at the top. It was probably something like that. Fair enough. All right. Anyway, we got ourselves a pretty good matchup here between uh, Darren Drys and Salty Fry. A one and one matchup. So there's a lot to play for on this one. The one and one pool is kind of a nightmare because, I mean, you look at the two and zero pool and you see a lot of dangerous people in there. You look at the one and one pool, you see almost as many dangerous people just spread out over a wider playing field. Well, um, I seem to I seem to recall the week one matchups being relatively close, so that I think that was kind of might have been a given for the for week two <laughs> being kind of the same, and then week three and all that stuff. So. Uh, looks like for Salty Fry, we're seeing Thief, Fighter, Red, Black, and this. Oh, seeing Fighter, Thief, Double, Red on Darren Drives. Ooh, that should be interesting. So let's let's talk about where they're the same. Let's talk about Fighter, Thief, Red. Uh, Fighter is, I think, one of the better melee carries for this flag set. Thief has a lot of utility. I'm a big fan of Thief. Uh, and Red Mage is the let's just hope all the magic rolls in the good early spots mage. Oh, yes. Yeah, so I, I can see Darren Drys taking the Red Mage. I won't say it's a bad decision. It'll just see, we'll, we'll see how the spell slots shake out, whether it'll just work in his favor or not. So let's talk about the difference between a second Red Mage and a Black Mage. The Black Mage will be better at running early and will get way better... Um, uh, it'll get total access to black magic, assuming we get the tail. Of course. Um, but a red mage can wear chainmail and has like a hundred more health in Tover. And it looks like we got Bane on the black magic side. I didn't see much on the white magic side. No, white magic looked pretty garbage, uh, but we yeah. got level one Bane. That's that's good enough for Garland. Well, no. I, I, I did see Soft Spell. That could be useful, but I, I don't see them picking that up, though. Yeah, I'd rather save the charges for Bane, if I'm honest. Ooh, Cheap Cabins. Was that 37 I'm seeing for Cabins? That's, that's, I believe that's 37. Yeah, that's 37. That's wow. cheaper than tents most of the time. Dang. Yeah, I could... No, no shame in stocking up on those early. Mm -hmm. Didn't see. Uh, I saw that there was <laughs> cat claws for sale. That's probably what we're gonna have. I think they were max price too. I didn't see what was on the armor side though. Um, I don't recall armor either. I was too baffled by forty grand for cat claws at Canaria. See, Darren Dry's making good use of that bane spell, getting some, uh, getting some early levels before heading to te uh, Temple of Fiends. I don't hate this play. Um, it gives a lot of necessary security in case we run into like a lot of encounters back to back to back in Temple of Fiends. Because if you hit zombies, if you hit ghoul, if you hit like the big garbage pack, um, that can be a lot. If you get bad bad turn order, that can be a lot of incoming melee damage. But Captain Captain goes, I don't think Bane would work very well against the the undead stuff anyway. So no, we're basically oh. hoping that those are runnable. Ooh. Zombies with frost. Okay, that's lovely. All right. And I saw the bottom <laughs> chest had a wooden helmet, so that's that's not worth keeping. For the top, top chest, we got soft, soft and five bucks. Okay, uh, the the money's good. You can get more cabins with that, if nothing else. Sure. Yeah, just going all in with the banes, and it gets the job done, quick and easy. Okay, what are we getting out of King and Princess? Let's see. That, please. Uh, we got an Adamant. All right. Uh, and an Oxiel. <laughs> well, that, that, that's that's wonderful. Wonderful thing to see early, isn't it? Why is it that every time it's not Sea Week, I get, like, Oxiel from King or Princess? I need to know. <laughs> I don't even. I don't think I even need to mention what happens on seeds I roll. So, <laughs> so we've got Adamant. We know we're heading to Dwarf Cave in a timely yep. manner. Do you do the Dwarf Cave check before or after Provoka? Um, my my. Well, goodness knows. 
I'm probably not a, I'm not a fast racer myself, but my thought would be maybe check dwarves. If it ends up being Thorhammer, I might reset out and then head to Provoka to save a little time. Mm -hmm. It really all, I guess it, the decision really hangs on what the, uh, what, uh, the blacksmith has. <laughs> Salty Fry, just just going all in, not even bothering to save before heading to the pirates, so it wasn't exactly a short trip. Uh, it wasn't exactly a long trip, but I believe, uh, was Unsafe Pirates on? I forget now. Unsafe Pirates is not on, so they can be okay. relied upon to have not much damage and no skills. Uh, so what is the pirate prize? It's a chime! More another things we thing, don't need right now. Another thing that we can't actually make use of yet. Uh, item shop has nothing of note. Uh, armor shop, what do we got going on over here? We got gold bracelets, gold bracelets. for 22,000s, and Not bad. chain armor. Chain armor's good. It's good early armor. Mm -hmm. the, the gold bracelets, they're not too bad at 22k. Might have to earmark that for a later time if we just if we are really strapped for armor for the mages. Mm -hmm. Cure four and level two, that's good. Heal two is also nothing to sneeze at if we're doing uh, early volcano dives and in black Fast. magic we got Mast and Lightning two is the sweeper, I guess. Yeah, it's it it. it it's better than nothing, but fa yeah. fast, fast is the big one for for the late game for sure. Mm -hmm. And not to mention having cure four in level two, that could be big if we find the tail within good reason, uh, within a reasonable time frame. And salty fry spent too much on magic, cannot afford the hotel, has to go out. Uh, are we cabining for safety? Yep. yep. Oh, we're just going for it. We'll just. Grab some fights on the way to Elfland or whatever, and we'll just use the end down there. Yeah, well, because if that was the case, we move, well, the cabins might have actually been cheaper than the, than the inn. <laughs> Cheeky Matoya check. I, I'm liking where this is going. Yeah, we've, we've got some loose items, so they could easily be there. Mm -hmm. And if it's not a quick reset, you're on your way out, on your way elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Two bucks, a silver dagger, and the canal. There we are. There we are. That's the thing. Yep. It saves us from Marsh. For now. Ooh, Gerwolds. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care if I commentary cursed on that front. I, it's, I still say for now. Yeah. Oh, unrunnable Sahags. Okay, that's... Always fun Ooh. to see, just because even they, they are just an annoyance that you can't, that you just have to poison smoke your way through. Bones with a skill list starts with glance. That's even more reason not to go to Marsh. Ooh yeah. Bet you wish you had that level one soft spell now, huh? <laughs> I'll, I'll settle. I'll settle for sailing elsewhere. <laughs> Salty taking the safety save at Canaria. Um, headed elsewhere. What are we buying in Canaria? We're checking the weapon shop. Oh, we're selling. Oh, the silver dagger. Yeah, we don't need that. Yep. We'd rather have most anything else. And looks like Salty Fry is heading to for to turn in the adamant. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Perfectly logical check. We can get two free boxes and a key item of some description. Um, and we can take sea fights along the way to prepare us for uh, hitting Elfland if we loop around. Alright, a two chests. Ooh, defense sword. That's good. That is a thing. That might was worth the trip by itself, and there's the canoe. Oh, okay, now we're in problem town. So we, we, yeah, we have options, and they're not all good options. So I'm going to run these options past you. Which one would you do? Your option... Well, technically, there's three options, but you can feel free to just, like, not do one of them. Your options are uh, all in Gamble Earth, or hit Ordeals and waterfall and see if you can get the resources necessary at some point to do see while you're there 
or hit Volcano and Ice. Well, Volcano is incentivized, but that's at the Red Dragon chest, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. So that's a bit of a thing. Um, oof. Uh, my first thought might be ordeals, but at the levels we're at, I, like, nothing sounds that good. <laughs> yeah, with the resources we have available, like no option is a good option. We're kind of really hoping that level 3 and 4 magic will bail us out here. Uh, hooray! Salty Prize the first to Elfland. And Vendor's his large dagger. Not going to take any other weapons at the moment. What have we got in Club 3 Black Magic? Temper. Fire and Fire 3. I'll gladly take one of those right now. What do we got in White Magic? We got White Locked Wall. For him, for him. Oof, ouch. And level 4, what do we got, White Magic? We got... Harm 4 and Promotion Locked Ruse for Endgame? Fog 2, eh. And, well, there's Ooh. Brack. Brack. Hello, Brack and Quadex. Mm. Still haven't seen the vendor item yet. Um, kinda cheap silver bracelets, but we have a disaster of a money problem right now. Yeah, we, we don't really have... Our, our resources are kind of strapped every which way. Question in chat from Wilkeliosis. Uh, this magic, not great. Was gear 4 in uh, 2 white? Uh, it was in um, level, level two, 2 white magic, so we got level, that. Yeah, level 2 white magic, so we're good on that either which way. Right, but our only sweeper at this point is lightning 2, and we've got Bane, I guess, which is fine for some things and really not fine for other things. It looks like Salty Fry is going to take a trip over to Crescent Lake to see what we got there. Um, that's, it's yet another, um, key item. If it's the floater, we're golden, but if not, we're gonna have to start making choices we don't want to make. Meanwhile, Darren Dry is heading the other way to checking out Melmond. Sure, it's more shops, um, looking for more things, try and mail down that pro ring wherever it is. Uh, no vendor item in Crescent either. Mm. No. Mm -hmm. So There's we're looking at... Rings. So we're looking at Anrak, Gaia, or Vanilla. Yep. Level fade. six fade. Red and, Wizard can't have it. And I think that wasn't that Vanilla exit spot too. Might have been. The Red that Wizard was... can have that. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, that that's a thing. Uh, we and... also had Lightning three. Ooh. Oh God. <laughs> Power Gauntlet at the Sages. Kind of good. Kind of bad. Cause you kind of. It's good because at least you don't have to worry about hunting that down, but at the same time, you kind of want something else at this point. Yeah, like, at this, uh, I'm, I mean, I know I wanted the floater, like, that's a given, but I think at this point I would have maybe taken cube over that just so I could do, like, the whole northern continent in one go. Yeah. Well, he's poison. Sign the poison smoke, some trolls and bulls, get a, get some extra levels. Not a bad idea. At this point, like, we are so cash starved, and we have very little resources to even generate it right now. Yeah. This is, this is going to be rough. Although trolls, as, as far as this early game, trolls is probably, I, I want to say that's one of the better items, uh, better enemies to fight, because I think that's, that cuts, gets some pretty good gold from them. With our tools, about the only place we can safely grind right now is outside Crescent. We can't hit Peninsula of Power because um, Zombles shrug off Bane, and, and we don't have Lightning 2 charges really just yet. Um, we can't hit Northern Continent uh, land. Um, Bane doesn't work quite so good against those either. We could try a river grind, but Hydras are going to wreck us right now. It's... Ugh. Yep, in a field of bad decisions, you just gotta take your pick. Mm -hmm. That good 2,500 gold from that, um, that giant encounter is definitely welcome sight, though. Ooh, Dengwu in chat. Can we try the Earth um, grind tiles? We could. We could do a cheeky first floor earth check. There's three grind tiles there. Hope one of them is Bane vulnerable and then and then just sit on it for like 20 minutes. 
Potentially, yeah. Yeah. At least one benefit of this grind outside Crescent Lake is that the town is right there. Mm -hmm. So you can heal again if need be. Mm -hmm. Whereas for pretty much any other... If you're, like, grinding and going for a dungeon, you kind of... You're kind of limited by how many, uh... How many cabins you got. <laughs> Darren Dry is headed back to the boat. Or not. No. Darren Dry is headed in the other direction. And... I think... Ooh. Ooh, boy. Now we're committed to heading towards, um, Elflin. Probably gonna pick up the rest of level 3 and 4 magic. Ah, yes. But it seems like both our runners are content to just do a resource grind for the time being. Darren Dry's resets back to Crescent Lake. I wonder if there was something deadly. Ocho's with a spell list starts with fast. That's, I mean, if they just stick to the spell list, that's a free round. But if they swing the next turn, that's bad news. Well, as you said, it could have been Hydra's because they can hit pretty hard and... Ooh, it's going in a different direction. Looks like we're getting the uh, scouting a bit of volcano now. Yep. I just hope hope that armory will save us. That's the prayer we're going with right now. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff there. Could find at least some equipment to help to help uh, survival. Meanwhile, Salty Fry having a heck of a time with this solo giant. It's just punching away, and the return the returning fire is not great. <laughs> That power gauntlet is already paying off. <laughs> helping the, the fighter just punch down this giant. Mm -hmm. uh, first grind tile on the armory floor is Cobras and Scorpions. Not great with our spell loadout right now. And nah. Mux had a spell list. I don't, I didn't see what it was, but I saw the hard reset after he saw it. Oh, it was, uh, thank you, Cheesinator. It was Frost. Yeah, uh, question in chat, we got Exit or Warp. We have not seen Warp yet, and Exit is level 6. Uh, I believe that was uh, Red Wizard Learnable, but Tail Locked, so... Yep. So we just kind of got to work with what we've got here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Bucks with Frost. That's not fun, because they tend to come in large groups. Darren Dries is just pure information dive at this point. Not even going to worry about trying to heal Pot up if he even has them in the first place. What do we got? We got a pure, 11 bucks, 9 bucks, a hat, uh, an open gauntlet, a heal pot, more heal pots, 12 bucks, an opal shield, another 12 bucks, 31 bucks. Oh, there's some good equipment. Unfortunately, there's some, at least some good equipment. Unfortunately, we can't use it yet. Karibs and Gators. That is potentially a baneable target. Gators are worth a lot more experience than you would expect, but if they swing, you're probably losing a party member. Yeah, yeah, probably. Ooh, an iguana is beating Darren Drys to the Lightning 2 Punch. This is a Ooh. lethal volcano. This volcano I think, is I think, our, I think our runners should be considering themselves lucky they didn't encounter that iguana on, on the way to Provoca or something. Given that armory was basically 150... No, sorry. 15,000 tops uh, with, like, no usable gear, uh, I think it's time to abandon ship and try the northern continent. Possibly, possibly, but... Trying to make your way through, say, ordeals at level 5, level 6. That doesn't sound too fun either. But if nothing else, he's trying to cash in some of these resources here. It's at least the, the monetary resources. So with all the spells and skills we've got in Volcano, what? Um, it, there's not much left that can roll on other things. So... We're just kind of looking at stats on this point for, like, Ordeal's creatures. What can we bane? We can bane Medusas. Um, and Medusas. Maybe some Catmen on the way. Um, but hey, there's Medusas. And we know that the Ar uh, the Argals are just all going to cast Dark first round, so that gives us one free round to run away. Um, yeah. He 
Meanwhile, Salty Fry is continuing the uh, Crescent Lake grinds, hitting level 8, level 9. Looks like he's Dan the, the Thief. Not a bad play at this point. Um, this is... This right now is a race to see who can get functional mages first, I think. And if we remove the thief from the equation, that's a 33% bump in experience for the rest of the party. You know, need lightning two and fire three charges like right now. And nice one thing that wanting to head west. And one thing Sorry, that was ahead. one thing that was mentioned in chat. We have Oxiel in a canoe. That gives us a potential access to if we want to take a run to mermaids. We got Mirage One and Two available. If you, at least Mirage One, it's not that long to get to the chest if you can get a good run in for it. Yeah. But me, it is. It's, it's, it's just the downside is it does take a while to get there. For me, I think um, the question isn't so much about gear as it is about levels. Um, ooh, picking up uh, quad X right now, that, that will help immensely. Yeah. And harm four is going to help for a lot of the dungeons that we can do right now, but we don't want to. Harm 4 is going to do great work in Ice Cave. Mm -hmm. uh, it solves the mummy packs in Ordeals. It solves the mummy packs in um, Waterfall. It solves ghosts if we make a mermaid dive. Uh, I like it as a grab. Unfortunately, that the one trap tile in Ice will, will likely be something other than a big undead pack, so that, that it, it may not help so much there. But as okay, you see, Salty Fry is heading into the volcano as well. We'll see. We'll see what Salty Fry does with this information. And decide maybe to go a bit deeper with it. Yeah, poor Salty Fry is about to get the news that volcano is a garbage dungeon that should be avoided at all costs. <laughs> well, the thing is, all we've seen on this on this floor is that chest and the art and the main room. We haven't seen any of the upper half of this floor yet. True, but part of the reason for that is because everything has killed us as soon as we tried to open anything. True. True. I'm just saying, there could still be something there. <laughs> but, you know, so if we have all these mucks in the way, then it may, it may be a while before we find out. Yeah. Salty Fry is determined to at least get some information out of this dive. Gonna check the top chests first. What do we got up here? We got a vendor gauntlet. Uh... A lot of incoming melee damage, a failure to run. Yeah. Scorpions that hurt. No surprise. Can we get out? Nope. Nope. Ooh. And a crit just to drive home the fact that this volcano does not like you. Meanwhile, Darren Dry is continuing the shopping spree in Elfland, really loading up on supplies, on anything that you would want um, for a bunch of dungeon dives. I am fascinated to see where he goes next. To Marsh? Ooh. Ooh. Interesting. All right. It... So we know that bones are going to be lethal. They'll be a problem. Yeah. But... Oh, and Mux. Mux will be a problem, too. So this yes. is dangerous. Yes, they will. If we, if we can get around them, uh, there could there could be some... There could be anything in here. There could be even be a boat. And we also have crawls with Poison Touch, just to drive the point home. Eh, Poison Touch is fine. Just bring 40,000 PRs. You'll be good to go. There's 30 cents. Ooh, reads, uh, peds are unrunnable. Uh, I mean, if we can bane them, that's good news. Well, three out of four ain't bad. Uh-oh. Uh oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh dear. Oh, hey, it's Bones with Glance. Abandoned ship. Yeah, well, we have a very agile statue now. Oh, and they have uh, heat. 
Second skill, heat. That's okay with the levels we have right now. That's survivable. Yeah. And for our treble, we get a cabin. Retail value, tan sands. This particular seed, you're almost, you're close, but yeah. <laughs> uh, we know the Gurwolves had stuff. It Ooh. started with snorting, so we're okay for one round. Salty Fry heading farther in. Um, heading farther in, we're going to... Um, if we get deep enough, we won't have to deal with the Lightning 2 Iguanas. We won't have to deal with the Mucks. Um, this might turn out okay. Lots of money in the, at that last room in Marsh, but Darren Dry says, no, let's go head somewhere else. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Uh, this bottom floor will have nothing of use except a loose key item. Uh, Darren Dries, using that knowledge of the link chest to good use, getting, grabbing that 9,000 gold chest. Mm -hmm. Ice sword, though. Mm -hmm. That ice that, sword. That's not a bad find. We, yep, we need to put that on right now. Especially since that's the, that's the only weapon that, that the fighter's got now. And boy, is it a weapon. That ice sword is going to do pretty well against anything that's not on a grind tile in here. Uh, eight bucks and flame shield. That's armor we need right now. Definitely. Ooh, red hydras are kind of paper. Mm -hmm. Probably good information for uh, Sky later. Ooh, oh uh, dear. Ooh. <laughs> I saw ice two there. On the so ghouls. the ghouls had ice two, and the zombies had frost. Marsh is, er, yeah, Marsh is lethal. It's yeah. not good. Still nothing much to be had in fire, but we're down to the final floor. So we know that the Agama tile was Spectre's Geists, and it yeah. seemed like everything was fine with those. Yeah, and... It's just a matter of what yep. the, the dragon tile has. That was not the trap tile. Nope. Got one more to go. There we go. There. <laughs> oh, uh, the guy... I see Sleep Touch. Sleep Touch is annoying, especially when we're trying to, wanna, to uh, run away. But they don't seem to be meleeing for that much. Which is fortunate. At this just... point, if you had Fire 3 charges, I might actually at least burn one. So it's at least you either run away or they die. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, remember Peds? Uh, meanwhile, Darren Dries, uh finding uh, an Aegis shield on the bottom of Marsh. Yet another nice piece of equipment that we can't make use of yet. Yeah. And what do we got down here? A pro cape. Pro cape, sure. a thing that we can use. Sure. Uh, Darren Dries equipped silver helmet. And what do we got for Grind Tile and Marsh? Here we go. Our, Our bones. bones. Probably survivable. For our prize, a Vendor Dagger. And, and Salty gets the crystal. <laughs> okay. Well, it, it's... It's... It's a thing. It, it exists. Also, I uh, believe Geists had Stare, but they seem very reluctant to use it, so that tile is still pretty safe to at least move through. And what do we got for the last bit of Marsh? Not much. Yeah, not a heck of a lot. It's mostly... A, a halfway's decent equipment and... A good chunk of money. So Salty Fry try and hold strats on carry one. The hold doesn't stick. Carry returns fire with ice two. Almost takes out the red and black wizards. Heal two goes out. Patches some of the damage a little bit. Second defense goes out. Sleep two hits the fighter. Immediately falls asleep. Third hold doesn't stick. We're going to try some more holds. Fourth hold doesn't stick. Incoming melee. Down goes the black mage. Oh boy. 
uh, more defense stacks. Carry oh. fasts. Bad news for the red wizard, not so much for the knight. Fifth hole. <laughs> Doesn't stick. How about some power? Are we going to com keep committing? Nope, we're going to heal too. We're going to patch that fighter up while that red mage is still standing. Power gauntlet goes off. Incoming melee misses. More power. More hold. The final hold. Sticks! Carry okay. is paralyzed. More power. We're going to try some melee. Incoming swing. Three hits, 296. Red Mage Paunch for one damage. Let's repeat that. Oh, Carry is knocked off the para paralysis, but three hits, 229. Carry's still there. Paunch for one. Paunch for one. Red Mage most consistent damage dealer. It's Knight swings in for 112. Incoming fire two. Does fire two things. Got a cure for that fighter. Carry gets through evasion for 93, but we get the cure for after that. Swing, three hits, 169. Carry's still up. Another swing, another crit through evasion. Oh my goodness. Or returning fire. This carry one is huge. Mm. We're gonna use the last cure four. Get that fighter topped off. Swing with the ice sword. Three hits, 125. Still there. What does it take to bring a carry one down? In more than one hit, one damage. More I'm than... waiting. I'm waiting for wow. that red mage to to get the kill shot. But no. But it, the kill shot does come through. Salty fry takes down our first fiend. Our first orb is lit, and we have a crystal for our efforts. That had to have been max or near max HP carry. Yeah. Eek, yeah. Thank goodness we had that ice sword, because otherwise that mm -hmm. could have ended. That, that still could have ended very, very badly. Yeah, the only thing that helped us out was that carry was very reluctant to lean on that spell list. Um, we don't we don't really have much in the way of resistance right now, so the Ice 2 and the Fire 2 kind of rumbled us a bit, but carry continuing to swing into an evasion-capped fighter um, did a lot of favors for Salty Fry there, and he knew exactly how to take advantage of that and take down what was basically 1,200 hit points of Fiend 1. Ah, I find it interesting that the thief got revived on uh, Salty Fry's side. Hmm. Are we Oh, we have, we have Pro Rings at, at uh, Ordeals. I didn't see that before. With all that money, they can, that's definitely a worthwhile purchase there. Mm-hmm. It's been a while since Salty Fry has been to Alfland. I wonder if we're headed to Alfland and then elsewhere, or if we're just going to pack our bags and head straight to Ice Cave. So I believe our other incentivized locations are Ice Ordeals and Titan's Trove, if memory serves. Uh, correct. Ice Ordeals, Titan's, and uh, Volcano. Right, yeah. Well, so we we, we, we've, yeah. We've seen what was in Volcano. I was thinking about what the yeah. other ones were. Uh, question in chat from One Fine Day. So Marsh was garbage, right? I mean, there was an Aegis Shield. Does that count? Aegis Shield and about and a five-digit gold amount. Oh, jeez. Graves have quad X. <laughs> but yeah, the Aegis Shield and I think a giant sword are probably the best things that we saw out of, out of there equipment-wise. I mean, I vendors love giant swords, but in terms of things we really want to use... The Aegis Shield was basically the only thing I saw that got my attention. Mm -hmm. Alright, so Salty Fry is in a boat, headed places. Yep, headed to Elfland. We gotta top off level 3 and 4 magic yep. before we do anything else. Yeah, we have the money to do it now. Mm-hmm. Darren tries, are you returning to the Volcano of Horrors? Or are you just going to bypass that and try ice with your shiny anti-undead magic? We're going to retreat to Crescent. Uh, maybe we're after Pro Rings. Maybe we we're forgetting if we saved or not. Maybe we forgot where we parked. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the the Darren Drives' ship is over this way, yeah. <laughs> it's one of the things, I mean, anyone who has played FFR has been there. 
you know, you spend like 40 minutes doing stuff, trying to fa try, like trying to make gambles. The gamble doesn't quite pay off. Correcting, going to buy resources, getting everything together and set. And you're like, okay, great. I'm ready to head somewhere else. Where in the crap is my boat? <laughs> I know I have it. <laughs> yeah. And Salty Fry pay taking the first uh, paying uh, his first visit to Melmond. Uh, I see life. Ooh, that's red learnable life, and we can get that without a promotion. Fantastic. Good. And not much in the black magic side. Fire two, I guess. If we really need another sweeper. Um, I would find it interesting if someone actually tried to do slow two strats on something, but that's probably not. That's probably not the most likely thing to happen. Technically, slow two is non-elemental. There is a non-zero chance that you can get a slow two to stick on chaos. I, if I remember the math correctly, it's somewhere around six percent, so not recommended. An expert will do nothing to help it. Uh, but hey, if you're looking for a new meme strat, no one's planted a flag in slow two yet. Honestly, I'd be more inclined to try to use it on Kraken two, but. Mm -hmm. Probably, so probably same, uh, same issue, different verse, uh, same yeah. issue, di different name. It's okay, I got there. I figured it out. And Salty gonna turn that crystal in immediately. It could be anything. It could mm -hmm. even be a floater. As Darren Dries is continuing to check places that are not incentivized, hoping for a cheeky loose. We're taking the carnival to Earth Cave. Interesting. And there's the cube. You you got what you wanted. You got you got the cube. <laughs> sure. Let's do all of uh, Northern Continent. Let's go. Uh, Darren Dry is reset out, um, and I don't think he saved outside because it looks like he reset all the way back to Melmond, having to walk back to the Earth Cave. got some uh if nothing else we're, we're gonna be gaining some information here like on uh, uh, maybe trap tiles maybe early treasure like i said we still got a couple loose items around if to to find mm -hmm. all right here we go first cheeky check at the top of earth cave what do we got going on besides an encounter table that hates us Mummies with above 80 health. Well, didn't get much data out of that. Silver hammer and peninsula of power all of a sudden. Not a bad grind tile until we hit north of like. And Never mind, they have cremate. It's officially yeah, they're, they're, a big grind tile. <laughs> yeah, the cremate's a big no. That's a big no. Yeah, it's gonna be a pass for me. Well, let's see what the other two options are over here. Um, I'm pretty sure that's Darren Dreis's plus point is hope against hope that we can find a grind tile that Salty Fry is not likely to check and then just ramp into orbit um, and then just use that to cruise through the rest of the game, garbage magic or not. Looks like um, we're heading to on rack for Salty Fry. Heck yeah. Or, ah, yeah, yeah there we go. Uh, so lobsters is okay, but dangerous because if they yeah. if they get snippy, uh, it's gonna be bad news for us. Oh yeah. They seem kind of evasive as well. That's not good for melee. Uh, Oasis shop, a max price crown. Wow. Boom boom. Okay. Um, I can see. I can see. Both of our runners waiting until that's the last thing. Um, depends on the waterfall grind tile, but probably uh, lower part of Earth has flame sword and um, nine thousand gold. I mean, goodness knows, it's a crown. You you would you wouldn't expect a crown to be cheap, right? No, but I wouldn't expect it to be that much. I mean. 
lots of lots of cheap things can be crowns. Burger King still does crowns, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah. We could have had one of those in Canaria for like, I don't know, two grand. Alright, Salty Fry taking a stroll through the waterfall. Uh, bad, more bad news from Ice Cave. We've got Asps with Ice 2. Um, the lesson here seems to be don't do the early dungeons. Everything is lethal. Uh, Terror Drive's escaping with one hit point. Need that information. Yep. He's... It's a cabin. A cabin. And a falchion. No thanks. Yep, we're gonna give up on the cheeky earth check. Um, worth noting, there are in fact two uh, grind tiles in the Hall of Giants, and I believe we only looked at one of them, but we would have had to get through lobsters to get to the other one. Yep. So, yeah. Well, there's always the Northern Hemisphere. Oh boy, and the nightmare we got nightmare encounter for Salty Fry. And the thief is once again down for Salty Fry. There was some debate earlier on whether we wanted that thief to do thief things or if it was a misclick. Based on the thief uh, resuming first slot duty, I'm going to assume it was a misclick. Or we're just using um, meat shield strats this early because we have no resources. But as yeah. I say that, Salty is level 14. His levels are actually not that bad at this point. Yeah, that uh, that crescent grind paying off, and it looks like we have Darren Drives heading for ordeals. Uh. I kind of like ordeals before waterfall just so we can scrape out a couple extra levels from it so that we're more equipped to do a sea dive if that's in the cards. Ooh, uh, ouch. I, I don't necessarily this, like that trap tile, especially since we're going to have to go through that again to get out. This is not a thing that we are equipped to handle. The nightmares will resist fire. Lightning 2 is not going to do enough damage to matter. Um, the nightmares resist Bane. Um, I guess we're quadexing bad men. No, no we're, we're not, not. quadexing bad <laughs> no, men. No, no, hey, no, we're not. <laughs> that's that's double bad news because not only can we not kill them in one shot, but they have over 300 health. All right. Uh, bad men have some pretty really high M def, so Bane is. Bleh. Oh dear. Gotta try to run. Nope. But Salty Fry doesn't quite get out. Oh boy. Now I have to go through all these mud galls and nightmares and all this other stuff all over again. Meanwhile, in Castle of Ordeals, the same note over and over again. Have fun. Um, so yeah, we got the Argoyles that just have turn one dark. Perfectly fine with that. It's yes, it take yes, it's a bit of a time sink, but. Uh, Time they spend casting dark is not time they spend meleeing, so you you y'all go for it. And Salty Fry is already back at the scene of the crime. He's gonna try running away this time. Gets it first action. What do we got? A ribbon. Hello. Okay. Silver helmet. Ice armor. Good. Fifty cents. Five bucks. A useless uh, rock. Eh. Okay. At, at least the equipment was good. Yeah. And the thief doing his job, getting the, getting everyone out of that encounter alive. Uh, meanwhile, Darren Dries had reset out of ordeals and is going back in. I wonder, I wonder what was lethal in here. We know Zombles had um, cremate. Um, I wonder if we ran into a bunch of those. Well, either that or. Just try to kind of reach, retrace your steps through the... Oops, Salty Fry taking a wrong turn in the waterfall. Did it find is... the out of bounds? Did find the out of bounds pad along the way, so obviously that was worth the trip. Yeah. Yeah, waterfall is one of the easiest dungeons to get lost in. Oh, and there's the Zombles with the cremate, and there's another reset.
Uh, mentioned seeing something in chat. Did the sorcerers roll vanilla death touch? Hmm. Worth paying attention for. Salty Fry is out with his prized goodies. Says no to nachos and is probably headed straight towards Onrak, is my guess. Yeah, you're already here. If you can get to the mermaids, at least, that's a good bit of good number of chests you can check. Mm -hmm. uh, we purchased Brack at some point. Fire 3 is not going to do us much good in here. Lightning 2 and Bane will be okay. Um, oh, I wonder if we're going to make a run at Kraken or not. That, this is a level? difficult decision. At like the Lord of Mid Teens? Oh, that, that's, that feels iffy to me. I'm but, not ooh, ooh. automatically saying no, but I wouldn't automatically say yes. It'll probably hinge on what's in Mermaids. Yeah. You know, Darren Dries has uh, the fighter being laid to waste by this mummy pack. All right, here we go. What do we got up here for a tile? Ooh, two to three blue dragons. Uh, that seems like a yikes encounter. Yeah, but uh, it's runnable at least. Mm -hmm. What do we got? We got seven bucks. And gold bracelet. Free gold bracelet. Heck yeah. Uh, Free pro ring. ring. House. Free pro ring. Um, I mean, they were only like six grand, but still, free, free good gear is free good gear. Yep. Uh, Eleven bucks, fourteen grand, seventy-three. Another okay, so big buckets of cash. And a, and tail. a vanilla tail, which we can't use right now because no floater. No, but that'll be real good. Oh, scary thing. But we scary have fire thing? three, so. Did they? No, they didn't roll that tanky. But he's able to get away from it. Yeah. So, ordeals is a bit of a bust. Uh, um, what? One thing that was noted I, that I happened to glance at from Salty Fry's side. Apparently, lobsters have stone touch. <laughs> nice. Eek. At least uh, Salty Fry had soft potions and was able to continue on, but still, that's not something you want to see. Especially, don't they? Can, can't they show up in Topher too? Lobsters? Oh yeah. Um, uh, Seafloor has the seafood party pack. Anywhere between one and six lobsters, depending on how much the game hates you. So far in the Kraken side of sea, not a whole lot. There is basically a house, some vendor gear. Uh, 11 bucks. We got two more dollars. Oh, oh dear. Oh. Return of the bones. Yep. Help. Please run. Ooh, thief gets stoned. It's getting hot in here. Meanwhile, Darren Drives is getting worked over by this uh, unrunnable Gurpede here. Uh, do we have... Are we carrying softs? We are carrying softs. The yeah. run can continue. We're going to leave the Thief Stone as a warning. Nope, never mind. No, he's not. No, we're... Okay. Yeah, we got to run from things. Yeah. Good call. Yeah. Uh, Gurnaga and Air would be a good encounter if we had something big to kill them with. Get a wizard staff for the trouble. Darren Dries is uh, in the Onrak area. Probably will be making a, uh, perhaps making a waterfall trip, unless, or maybe making a mermaid trip. Our could runners could be, be in, uh, be in a bit of a sink, but no, it looks Darren Dries is heading the waterfall first. I think it was just an information pit stop on the way to waterfall, which is a good call. If we can do waterfall first, uh, his levels, his levels are way too low um, for a good proper sea dive. 
Uh, but if we can kill some things over in Waterfall, that might change. Uh, Ooh, hello, hello. Worms at Sharknado. Hi, favorite grind tile. If only we had something to deal with them. I would throw out a cheeky quad X. Never mind, they have Lightning 3 Abandoned Ship. Why, why are all the bad tiles bad? So yeah, Salty Fries just make it a quick attempt at Kraken. If nothing else, we're gonna get some information at uh, how nasty Kraken 1 decides to be this time around. <laughs> Meanwhile, apparently it was noted in chat that apparently Darren Dries has not checked the caravan, so he does not know that the, the uh, crown is there yet. That explains the on-rack pit stop. Um, Part of it was investigating magic to see if we have to care later, but the big thing was probably the on-rack item shop, hoping that we could spare ourselves a trip to Caravan. So Darren Dries hey, gets the oh, good there's, news. Ooh. Oh dear, there's the lobster. Oh dear, I think Salty Fry's low, if not outright out of... Oh, never mind! Oh boy, that's gonna be scary if we see a pack like that in Dover. You hate to see Kraken floor wipes in a sea dive. It's real bad. Um, we gotta I... do this while we're here, though. Yeah, at least I don't think there was anything that wasn't much worthwhile in the chest, so we could just skip right past them all this time around. But still, you you don't want to <laughs> see that. Yeah, I mean, there was an opal armor, I think, in one of the free Sharknado chests. Um, that would be worth getting, but other than that, yeah, I think everything was basically garbage. Hi, lobsters. Hello, and yeah, if they're not, they're not stoning you, they're just killing you outright. Uh, Either way, not a, not a fun thing to see. Technically, um, a stone touch that kills is the better option because the red mage has access to the life spell. <laughs> um, they also have access to... Wait, actually, which slot was soft on again in level one? I think it was... If it I was, don't remember. If it was I think it was slot... learnable level one. Okay. Suddenly, that seems like a not a bad idea. It's an awfully long trip to go back to get it, but that would show um, the forward-thinking strategy of picking it up while you were in Canaria the first time. It only shares the level with Bane. We don't really care that much about Bane once we get actual magic. Um, it would have been good to have. But also, we were, like, dirt poor at the beginning of the game, so any True. spell would True. have cost money. There is that. Ooh, Cheesinator pointing out. Uh, by the way, thanks to our tracker, Cheesinator, tonight, stepping up at the last minute to help us out. Big thanks to him. Mm -hmm. um, pointing out that uh, the Gasty encounter in Waterfall is off the power cycle. If this thing goes down easy, we could have found our grind. Possibly. We're testing the waters with just basic swings and lightning, too, to try and, I think, ballpark uh, how much health this thing has before we try the bigger, fancier options. Try the cheeky quad next. Down ouch. goes the fighter. Some more lightning two. Lightning two took it out. I didn't see quite how many rounds of combat that was, but I don't know. If, I don't quite, think it was uh, that many. It, it was a it was a few. Oh, so that might be one of the things that um just uh we have access to fast, don't we? No, we don't. We yeah. have temper. That's the one we have. Yeah, you temper up uh, the fighter and then let it swing like once or twice and then quad exit, call it good. It's no, cumbersome. Fast, no, fast was at level two, so we have access to that. Okay. Oh yeah, what? oh yeah, so just, yeah, fast and temper and then swing and then next round just swing quad X, hope for the best. Uh, it's, it's a goofy grind, but like we need levels so we can't really be that choosy right now. See, we've got unrunnable waters. That's a lovely thing to see for the end game.
waters are worth great experience, but without an ice AoE, it feels real bad. Well, if they have an ice sword, as long as it's only the one. Yeah, the ice sword is great when you there's only one water. When there's six, we need an AoE. Yeah, yeah. Although it does seem to have at least a decent amount of health to it. Darren Dry is going to go check the caravan. Um, he's real close to affording that crown. Yeah, not quite, though. Are we just going to take a grind around here? That seemed like a power cycle. That seemed like wanting to take a grind around here. And I saw thunder on Gersharks. Oh. Oh, dear. This sea is a disaster. Uh -huh. I was calling. The, I was questioning going to see quite this early, going towards Kraken quite this early. When you're going, when you're in like the low to mid teens, because that's no, well, there's that's one statue and two statues, and we're wiping again. And Salty Fry is out with the new information on new lethal things. Yeah, it hurts, but I don't blame him. It just makes water floor for Tover just look worse and worse all the time. Mm -hmm. We're gonna need levels before we try and do that. Um, Salty's probably headed to ordeals at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah it looks like it. Yeah. More so you won't bad get bad news there. Well, at least getting what gold bracelet. At least, at least get some decent equipment, but it won't get the key item that he's looking for. Mm -hmm. So, as I'm, I'm wondering whether I should even bring this up, but I think we're rod away from. Well, no, we still need the loot and the key, don't we? Yep. No, I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna say, I was gonna say floaterless go mode, but but we, we're still missing a couple things. Well, given that we know, uh, and when I say we know, we don't know, but we know. Uh, that the loot and key are loose in Sky, because everything is loose in Sky. Um, yeah, they're basically one rod away from go mode. Well, I mean, granted, I had a seed recently. It wasn't under these flags, far from it. But I had, I ended up having four key items in Marsh. <laughs> it was uh, two at the incentivized locations, two loose. That was really, really weird. So Darren's got the crown and is headed back in the direction of Onrak. I wonder if this is a safety save or if uh, Darren's going to make a C play right here. Uh, he's saved outside of Onrak, so I think he's, he's yep. diving in. Now just a matter of does he go left or does he go right? At his levels, like we got to go right. We, we got to patch up levels on whatever we can fight, get a little bit of information on the stuff that we're dealing with in here. Yep, we're headed right. Yeah, and I mean, Darren Drives has lower levels than Salty Fry does. Salty Fry was having these uh, the kind of issues that Darren Drives is seeing right now. Mm -hmm. Lesson one, Gersharks have thunder. Uh, we're just going to reset out of that because we were on the first floor anyway. Uh, Salty Fry taking these blue dragon fights. I mean, we've got fire three. Sure. They also have melee and a lot of it. Yeah, well, yeah, they're... Dra dragons tend to do that, don't they? But okay. they, they... They go down. Yeah, all right. Mermaid side, what do we got? We got 12 bucks. Going to avoid the chests that are way out of our way in pursuit of the mermaid floor. Oh, of course. Gr Gersharks have stun touch, too, as if thunder wasn't enough. <laughs> I'll be sure to have a word with whoever rolled this later on. It wasn't me. It sure wasn't. And in Mermaids, we've got heal, two bucks, 17 bucks. Salty Fry gets the tail, gets the bad news that me ain't done yet. We got 12 grand out of that chest. What do we got in the not incentive chest? We have four bucks, a silver bracelet, a vendor hat, and we got some dead frost dragons for Salty Fry, so that's 
getting some good experience in ordeals from the blue dragons and the frost dragons. Mm -hmm. I got seven bucks. Oh, a stick. A light axe, 17 bucks. Kind of a lot of disappointment so far. Yeah. Yeah. It's looking like sea, uh, sea shine. Oh, there we go. That's something. We can't use it yet, but it's something. We have, no, we have the tail, but we don't have the floater yet. But still, it's, that's, an, it's yeah. a thing. It's an endgame weapon that's far better than Ice Sword. It's definitely worth carrying out if we can manage it, but no, it doesn't solve any of our current problems. All right, Salty Fry heading over to grab that, grab uh, the crown. Honestly... I wouldn't be too opposed to turning that in. I think it's the only thing we really have left to do. Uh, we really, really need this to either be Ruby or Floater. Uh, Hydra's and or Ocho's had Glare. Yeah, even, that, that, um, yeah. even that Ocho's had a spell list. I'm going to assume it was them. Question in chat. Any loose found yet? Nah. Nope. Aside from the obligatory uh, canal find, which was in Matoya's cave... Mm -hmm. that's all that's all we got for loose items so far yep so at this point if we're down to turn in crown or search through anything beyond the first floor of earth or barrage mm -hmm. and that's about it I think because mm -hmm. we've already we've seen pretty practically everything Sea Shrine has to offer and it's just a lot of death and miscellaneous disappointment. Yeah. Um, yeah, Salty, of the two runners, Salty was better equipped to handle C, and even he got bounced out of it. Um, Darren Drys is going to have to make some decisions quickly on whether or not he's going to try just, like, a first floor grind and hope for the best, or if we're just going to try and turn in that crown. Get that uh, floater. Ooh. Okay, then. Things just got interesting here. And suddenly everything is looking up. <laughs> I get it. All right, then. Uh, the, def and the deafening got... silence tells me you enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, we have our... We have floater. We have our... Not our new primary mode of transportation we have the means of promoting which I don't which I suspect salty fry might do sooner rather than later so now the question still is what do we do we have quick access to ice now which has an incentivized item uh, the list of things that we can uh, check off right now um, Sarda Cardia including promotion right um useless rock turn in um, and then I think we can just reassess from there and Darren Dries follow following in short order getting that floater as well mm -hmm. alright what does Sarda have is Sarda a jerk neighbor nope uh, Sarda really likes his bottled water you can get like huge packs of them at Costco I've heard So we're still we're still missing three major items. We're still missing the key, loot, and the rod. There's not um, a whole lot of places that can be right now. We're still missing two loose items. No, we got to do now that we have bottle. We really got to do um, that slab turn in because that that'll be two key items right next to each other. Yep. That'll give us a lot of information about what's loose that we need to worry about. As Salty Fry is doing um, the key item turn-ins, Darren Dry is not that far behind right now um, going for uh, his airship. Uh, really, the only thing that separates these two runners right now is the carry one kill, which, if we're doing Volcano and Go mode, is not that terribly long. And by the time Darren Dry gets there, I would bet 
that he's going to get a much faster kill just by virtue of having more things at his disposal. And might just be in go mode in general, too. <laughs> and good that Darren Drys also has the advantage of... I, I want to say, did he walk out that Excalibur, or did he... Uh... Uh, I missed it. I want to say he did, but I could be wrong about that. Uh, chat correcting or er, chat conflicted. Yeah, uh, he was able to walk out Excalibur, so that okay. that's a big thing for him. Oh yes. Yeah, Salty Fry paying a visit to a friendly dragon as opposed to the non-friendly ones we've been seeing so far. I mean, it's good to have a friendly dragon. That just it's, zaps it's, you with a time beam and grows you up. It, it, it's just a shame that we can't bring him with uh, bring, bring him with us for the chaos fight. No, we didn't figure that out until a couple games later. Yeah, but even then, he, he, he only shows up for a brief moment. Another pro cape and a free pro ring, and Ooh. our second ribbon. So I'd call that ribbon go mode at least. Um, yeah, Salty Fry, he can make do with an ice sword if Topher is kind to him. But do you want to gamble on Topher being kind to you? Given what we saw just earlier, <laughs> that, I don't know if that's a gamble you want to make unless you. Unless you really feel behind. Mm -hmm. Alright, what is that bottle going to turn into? So not only do we have our various key items, I don't think we've seen any of the uh, equipment incentivized items either. Ooh, there, there's, there's the rod. There's the rod. So we're at least we're at least able to clear all of the fiend dungeons right now. Mm -hmm. That's something we can do. Mm -hmm. It's just we can't do much beyond that right now. Right. So. Hmm. So so but back to my original point. Uh, the like Thor's hammer, opal bracelet. I don't think we had seen any of the. Well, we did see the power bunk, power gun. Yeah. Was that on the incentivized list? It was. Um, okay. I believe that was from Sages. All oh, right, that's right, that's right. Yeah. Ooh, and there's our key. Ah, and that just opened a lot of options for where that loot could end up. Or just any of the loose. It's. We True. still haven't found a single one yet. An hour and yeah. five minutes in and no loose has got to feel like you have missed something obvious. Right. Oh boy, and the zombies are back. Uh, at least we're at the level that cremate is more annoyance. And with two, ri like with ribbons on both of the casters, um, cremate is basically just an annoyance at this point. So zombies yeah. are kind of safe to grind. I want to say the fighter had ice armor, if memory serves. Uh, probably, yeah, which uh, would work fine. Ooh, unrunnable rankylos. Oh, dear. That's uh, fun. Breaking out the fog, too. <laughs> Not the worst idea against these things. No, especially, ooh, especially since they've got a good bit of absorb themselves. Yeah. We're going to try melee strats to bring them down. Can't help but notice that we got that quadex sitting there. It'd be a shame if these things were erased and terminated. Then again, I think Salty Fry is going with safety strats at this point. He is basically steps away from his airship. Yeah. I don't think he saved in uh, Lafayne, um, or basically since he landed the airship prior to running to Lafayne. So we got to make sure we make it through this encounter. We don't want to get cheeky and they roll max HP and we just have a bad time. Well, he's able to make it through. Ah, yes. Pay, 
getting that cure for on that night. Probably get, yep. might get fast on the ninja as well, if, just in case he decides to, to bring him up. Yep, looks like he's going to do just that. Uh, no, or fast no? On, no, fast on the black mage. Um, black, remember, no, we no. were fast on everybody. Oh. Okay, I mean, since we're already here, fine. But like, we were dirt poor in the beginning of the game, and fast was 500 bucks. So I can see why we passed on that early on. Do some inventory jiggling real quick as Darren drives in Gaia, looking to turn in the bottle. Ooh, uh, stopping at the item shop. Got to stock up on heal pots, I assume. Maybe a couple houses. And Salty Fry stock getting some gold bracelets as well. Yep, or at we least that one. End game. Well, the other we got the free one, so we got the one for our red mage now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, we're getting some key checks. Makes sense. Um, we almost certainly need loose at this point. Yeah. Oh, hey, there's... Powerful. Well... It, it, it's it's a weapon. It's... I, I know there's a lot of divi very divided opinions on it. So, real talk real quick. Let's talk weapon options based on what we've seen so far. The real contest comes down to Excal versus Vorpal. And the answer to that is both. Uh, we want Excal for everything up until Chaos. But Excal versus Chaos is really not great. Uh, Chaos would be where we want to switch to the Vorpal. We've got Fast, we've got Buckets of Temper, we've got a Power Gauntlet, like two rounds of buffing, and the Crit Machine will do its work. Well, that's for that would be for Darren Dry. Salty Fry doesn't have Excal, so instead it would be basically a choice between Vorpal, Defense, and Ice Sword. Uh, I'd still go with the Vorpal at that point. Um, defense is fine power. It's bad crit. Um, it, it'll do the job. The pro In order to make Vorpal work, you need to give it a lot of helping hands. And it just so happens that the way magic rolled in this seed, we can give it all the helping hands we want. Hello, Dragon Armor. That is a lovely sight to see. Question in chat, what the heck kind of enemy was that? Well, let me tell you about Team Steak. Uh, there is an enemy in this game. That enemy is a Tyro. Some people view it as a happy, fun dinosaur with which to be friends with. Uh, the rest of us view it as a meal to be consumed to pad our levels because this is a race and we gotta win. Yep. And I'm usually one to to take the experience as I get it. Though the thing is, I probably take way too uh, more fights than I probably should for anyone that would be in a race, I guess. So I have been known to take Tyro fights that were nonsensical just because I was there. Um, I don't know if it has ever mattered in a close race, but I know it has made me feel bad after taking them. Well, there's a black shirt. Uh, black shirt, it's just like a gold bracelet, but we also get cold and time resist. Seems good. Ah, yes, the heel helmet. Now, now we know Salty Fry has the true advantage. <laughs> heel helmet, it's just like a silver helmet, but you need to be promoted to use it, and it casts a spell you don't want. Yay. Speak for yourself. I, I spam those things. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I, 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 if I can, I try to keep the heel helmets, at, the both heel helmets and the heel staff, and spam the heck out of them. <laughs> so where is Salty going now? It looks like we're headed west. We're either cleaning up volcano. No, we're getting level six magic. That's what we're doing. Okay. Exit. Getting exit. Exit before ice. It's it's the thing that these runners should do. Especially since we never did see warp, I don't think. 
No, warp is some absurdly high level. Yeah, it's either seven or eight. I didn't see. I don't think I saw any either of our runners even check uh, seven or eight level magic. Um, question in chat: Is his red mage level twenty? The last I saw, it was eighteen. Oh, it's seventeen. Um, well, we can have exit for other dungeons. Ooh, is Darren Dries is making the incredibly cheeky Topher lock check. Mm. Mm. Especially since even now those ghouls are still kind of nasty with that ice too. Yeah. And then we got to deal with zombies with frost. At this point, we'll just like whoever drops can drop, and we just got to keep on trucking just to get to the chest. Mm. And I say whoever drops will drop, and there's a lot of people dropping right now. <laughs> And one thing we've we've got the sorcerers here, which if uh, if uh, chat was accurate, this the sorcerers got their vanilla touch of doom, which will make their appearance in sky very very scary. The werewolf say stop. Uh, Fire through your time. Now, this is not a bad tile here at this stage of things. I don't like it without ice. Ice is the thing that really wrecks chimeras, and we just don't have a reliable source of it right now. Well, the Bane's doing decent, decent work. Mm -hmm. Alright, what do we got in top right to overlock? Here we go. We got a tent. The mage staff? Yeah, no, we got castable fire three. Mage staff is kind of. Uh... Yeah, I didn't. I didn't see what was the, in the bottom chest though. Oh, um, garbage. <laughs> yeah, it couldn't have been much if he was resetting out like that. So. Yeah. Meanwhile, salty fry gets through the grind tile, gets his prize of a house. Let's try this other tile, or this other thing. It's a short sword. That leads to nachos. And what do we got on this bottom floor? What's this tile? Ooh, it's oh the eye tile. Oh my hell. Let's, let's find out what's tragic about this. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, they don't have too much for help. Seems to be lulling us into a false sense of security. We get a vendor gauntlet and a pure potion. Ooh boy. This is actually one of the better spots to actually get this encounter on because it's uh, one, I don't know if you can call it a quirk of the uh, engine. If you're walking on the, uh, the bottom row of tiles in a room, you're uh, like basically on the same like one row above the door. Apparently, that's you, uh, it doesn't advance the encounter table, so you can just walk those tiles with impunity. Mm -hmm. And that if means you ever you ask why the answer is Nasir. Ooh, there's our first first loose, and it's the loot. That's it. We go mode. Ooh, and a Gurmedusa tile. This might be okay to drop some spell charges on too. Oh, they've got stun touch. Never mind. When oh, the mages have stun touch too, this is basically the uh, the, the paralysis touch ice cave. <laughs> Yeah, at least with the mages, at least they're not doing much for damage, so it, that's more of an annoyance than, than a <laughs> time sink. <laughs> and what's Salty Fry setting up for here? Salty Fry is setting up for an eye grind, because that's the direction we're headed in, and we're burning up ourselves on the lava prior to taking it. We know, as you just said, that we're not going to have any other encounters on that tile, and all we need is just... we just need one character swinging away, get it to low Earth orbit, uh, and we'll be good to go. We're going to cure for the night. 
And no, uh, wait, what? Hold up. That oh, is... we're just killing the thief. D oh, okay. D Danning the. Uh... Oh, eyes have squints. <laughs> well, I we knew... have we have pro rings, so that's not much of an issue, um, thankfully. As long as we keep all three party members up, um, and then just like withdraw when like one of the squints three and two fifty sixes, we should be fine. Ah, yes, and <laughs> well, there's the one damage. See? And there's the squid. Okay, <laughs> cool. We out now. We did it. This was our grind. We did it. Ooh. Laughing in the face of danger. And Darren Dry's checking the last couple chests on the armory floor. I didn't see what the hairpin chest was. The other one was a Zeus gauntlet. So our eye skill list so far is squint into dazzle into squint. Either it's a two skill list or we still are missing the fourth one. Well, I think if their health is low enough that they're not living long enough for that to happen mm -hmm. more often than not. It is making it a bit of an annoying grind, but as long as we get the levels we want, it's fine. As long as that squint doesn't hit the knight, we're yes. fine. Yes, yes. But uh, I'm feeling real nervous watching this. I've hinged a black belt grind on avoiding a 3 and 256. Um, I got all the way to my target level. Well, sorry, I got two levels shy of my target level, and then I wiped. Yep. Because as it turns out, when you give it 256 tries to land, one of them eventually does. Oh, geez, they only got about 100 health. At That's most. convenient. We're still dodging squint. Yeah. It's just a matter of it's it's all down to risk assessment. A is just how far do you want to go with it? Because you know you still have to get out because you don't got warp. Mm -hmm. We're still going this far, and we're basically relying on our toe for dive being two and a half characters, being the two being the knight and the black wizard, and the half being the red wizard. And um, maybe and maybe the quarter as a, for a, a the uh, ninja meat shield. Yeah, that ninja is basically a meat shield for any like real boss fight. At most, it will be accomplishing maybe like two hits, two damage on whatever it's swinging. Um, I think we're taking this party to twenty nine, maybe thirty, or maybe we're just going until we're out of um, useful magic charges and hope that nothing unrunnable gets in our way. Um, uh, I know that the. Uh, Gurpeeds are unrunnable. Don't yeah, remember this... anything else, though. At this level with Excal, we can just mash Gurpeeds. We'll be fine. Well, I mean, Salty Fry doesn't have Excal, though. Uh, Excal was, I... on the, uh, was on the mermaids. I keep forgetting that. He's got Vorpal. Vorpal will mash Gurpeeds. Like, at this point, we've got enough hits that we're swinging Did... that one will crit, and it'll be fine. Did, uh... I know Salty Fry originally had the Vorpal on the... Red Wizard, did he switch it over? I mean, level 28, 29. In Ice Cave, it really doesn't matter what we're swinging. Anything's gonna be lethal to trash mobs. So Darren Drys is making uh, the full clear play of Volcano, still looking for that loose. We know it's an Ice Cave, but he doesn't. But he is gonna get... Uh, the incentive crystal, which is going to turn into his cube. Yep, so it's something he will have to do. So if it'll be worth the trip, it, regardless. It's just mm -hmm. not necessarily what he might be looking for. Just well, I mean, the, we have, we'll need the cube to get through Scott anyway. But yeah, 
this could lead him on the path of just gambling loose and gambling on Mirage Sky, but we so still have that ice incentive. Notice Salty. Uh, I guess I guess we're not gonna find out what the what the incentivized item is in ice because Salty Fry is heading elsewhere. He's heading he's heading for Mirage. He just went through the one loop and he's done because there's really nothing else that he needs right now. Right. The only things that are left is um, based on what the tracker has, um, it'll be a fetch chain into one of either an Opal Gauntlet or a Thor Hammer, neither of which we want or care about. Yeah. Yeah, Salty's done opening boxes. He's just going to go for it. Yeah, we got two ribbons. We got a Vorpal. We got OK Magic. We've got pretty really good armor. Yeah, we don't need anything else out of boxes. Maybe Sky 3 Greed check, but, like, that or nothing. Yeah, he's checking the Greed ones. Uh, greed was a yeah. bust. No. Worth trying. As Darren Drys leans in to carry one, we're going to try some melee strats, but we've got a lot of absorb we're dealing with right here. Uh, the melee, a lot more dampened than the last time we saw it. So behold the wonders of armor. We're going to fast up the ninja and the knight. We're going to start tempering. Swing with the Excal, 6 hits, 252, need more than that. Swing with the Vorpal, 6 hits, 68 with a crit. Incoming melee swing doesn't do much. We're going to continue powering. And maybe a Quad X. 6 hits for 325, that's still progress. Vorpal swing, 6 hits, 150, that might be in Quad X range, but it's nope, not. not quite. We got over 300 health to go. Incoming Ice 2. Won't do as much here as it did against Salty Fry earlier. Outgoing damage, two hits for 22. Trying Quad X again. Not quite there yet. We needed better turn order. Six hits for 91 is helpful. Six hits for 364, and down goes carry one. All right, that's... We got one orb apiece, and Salty Fry is going to the Bridge of Destiny. Where am I, robot? Do I get a yeah. robot? Nope, no robot. I don't get a robot. Putting the defense on the ninja. Um. If a tank? So, that's my guess. We put the ninja in the top slot, we handed it um, the defense. Um, if it just defenses up, whenever Tia does melee, um, it'll do no damage. Uh, unfortunately, Tia was able to accomplish melee, and it still did no damage. So that defense is kind of a um, uh, kind of an unnecessary extra at this point. Um, the ninja would probably be better off swinging, but we're flinging veins and Brax. We don't care about damage at this point. Well, Tia Matt is unimpressed. With yeah, under. can't can't <laughs> avoid that. Tia Matt unimpressed with the ninja's defense shenanigans. Let's just thunder it down. Brax goes out, doesn't work. Incoming poison damage. Uh, outgoing swing, four hits for 351. How about some Bane? Nope. Oh, that, was after, that was after some bonk charges doing that much. Uh, so, uh, the, this team has got some uh, got some absorbed too, but doesn't care, Brack. <laughs> yep. Um, default TM at one does actually kind of have a lot of absorb. So if it roll if it starts to roll up, that's bad news for a melee focused party. But MDef isn't randomized, so you hold the power of Brack. So at this point, do you just decide to go do knockout Earth first, or do you wanna do you wanna try to get your revenge on not even Kraken, just the floor that he's on? We're closer to C, do C. That's really all that enters into it. What are we closer to? C. And then Earth will be on the way between here and Topher. Boom, done. Fair. Fair. At least we're better equipped now. Just if, if in equipment, if not in levels.
But goodness knows, with those lobsters around, I think it all just comes down to MDEF regarding those that stone touch, doesn't it? That uh, That's true, and that's good news for two of the members of our party that did um, a fast and fun eye grind a couple minutes ago. They will largely be able to survive stone touch. The knight definitely, the black wizard kind of-ish better. Um, the ninja and the red wizard, don't hold your breath. And looks like Salty Fry, unfortunately, will be missing out on that. Cal, at the moment, I believe, is still rocking that uh, ice sword. <laughs> um, weapons for um, garbage packs at this point are largely... For the levels that I believe that Darren Dreiss has, largely ornamental. Um, doesn't really matter what it's labeled, as long as it's like Silver Sword or Stronger, it'll do what you need it to do. And Darren Drives finds that high tile. We'll see what he decides to do with it. Uh, just crossing level 15 or 16, uh, I would like staying here for a bit. Yeah, it's just like, you, this is... Squint aside, this probably best might be best case scenario for a grind tiles that you might as well just get the levels you need now just so it's not an issue. Mm -hmm. So Salty Fry not caring about anything on the Sharknado floor, he's headed straight for cracking one. Well, Can't he had say as I blame him. He had been through that floor already, so we already know there's not much there. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of things that could shut down our run in our tracks. We've got um, sea trolls with a skill. We've got the stone touch lobsters. Um, Gersharks sharks with thunder. Right, Gersharks sharks with thunder. But here we go. Here comes the reset. Exit boss. Ladies and gentlemen, every year exit boss kills runs worldwide but for your donation of a couple hundred bits we can fight the exit boss together and raise awareness about not having exit in your first slot i mean to be fair that was his only slot only spell on level on level six but still you, you you always hate to see that happen you know at that point i will just buy a garbage spell to put in the way just so exit is not first slot <laughs> Darren Drys gets the loose loot. So, but continuing to open boxes, I wonder what Darren Drys is looking for, or just hoping to get like a cheeky extra ribbon or something in this box. Uh, according to our tracker, he doesn't have the cube yet. So I might still be looking for that. Mm, okay. All right. That's hedging your bet on the second loose. Uh, being an ice is okay until we go turn in um, that crystal, which should be the next thing on our list, because, like, we're right here. And Salty Fry... But running into these uh, Wizzag packs, which aren't the most threatening thing, but they're they're uh, quite literally a waste of time right now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of incoming melee damage. None of it matters. They have a lot of sprites that we have to deal with, so whatever we cast to take them down is going to take a while to just chain through them. If we're using something like the Black Shirt, it'll kill most of them, but not all of them, so we'll have to repeat this sad dance in another turn. It's just... From a speedrunning perspective, it is the worst thing you can find in Sea Shrine. One thing that was brought up uh, by our Tracker Cheesinator, uh, does Darren Drys go through the second loop here? Uh, he has to because he doesn't know where the cube is. It could be Ice Incentive, it could be Crystal Turn-In. Um, we just gotta. 
I saw there was a sun sword there. I don't think Salty Fry picked that up. Um, not that it's necessary at this point. I would run a Vorpal um, into over, over a sun sword. Well, actually, let me let me change that. Um, for trash, I would run the sun sword. For bosses, I would run the Vorpal. Well, I'm saying it's probably still better than the ice sword, though. Yeah, it is. And we saw that it was an herb at the uh, at the incentivized chest. So that herb is gonna turn into something annoying. The pathing at this point is probably a 50-50 shot whether he picks crystal turn in or herb turn in. Herb could point him farther in the wrong direction. Um, crystal will put him into go mode. The thing is, at least it won't take you that far. At least it wouldn't send you to to like Lafane for a trash item or something. At least it, right. it would. At worst, it will take you to. Titan's Trove or TNT turn in. Right. But we're going to take the crystal turn in. Get us our shiny purple box. And with that, Darren Drys is in item go mode at least. We'll see if he decides that he's also in equipment go mode. Uh. Um. Uh, well, he's not, he's not turning it in. Oh, we're going to the party member store. That's what we were doing. Okay, that's, that's fine. And then loading up on magic. Sure. Salty Fry rounding the corner, about to take on Kraken 1. And... So far, successfully... Yep, successfully evading the exit this time, and now we have our... Oh, at Kraken 1. How are we handling this? We're at a level 2 charges on the Red Wizard, so we got fast going on. Defense going off on the Ninja. Power on the Knight. Knight gets slapped for 220 damage out of a lot of hits. Fast goes off. Bane goes out. Bane doesn't quite get there. Let's try some more defense. Let's try some more power. How about some Bane and a Brack? Defense goes off. Brack goes out. Ineffective. Hold incoming. The Red Wizard is held but recovers. More power gauntlet antics. Defense goes out. We're going to try some more Bane. How about some more Brack? Incoming. That Knight is down on one knee. Bane, ineffective. Brack. Broken into pieces. pieces. That is orb number three for Salty Fry. Three down, one to go. You know what? Darren Drys has decided to head for, uh, head for Earth. Sure. It needs to be done, and we were closest to it. Yep, and that herb turned into the ruby, and I don't think... I think at that point, Darren Drys is saying, yeah, I think I'm done. Yeah. Um, I think he knew at that point that whatever it was going to turn into was going to be disappointment. And the herb turn in is okay. There's no encounters in Elfland Castle, at least not yet. Wink, wink, developers. But <laughs> <laughs> the problem with the Titan turn in is that there is encounters in there, and that can be a lot of time wasted just to get four chests that one of them you know is going to be unhelpful and the other three might have a Maza. But both runners holding hands in the Earth Cave at this point. Darren Drys has a bit of a lead, but Salty Fry is making up time. Darren Dry's rounding past Bat Party Room as Salty Fry has to work on burning down this wolf pack before he can make any more forward progress. And here comes Blue Shaped Smear 1. Done. Well, I mean, considering that the vampire becomes a regular enemy, just how strong is it? Uh, well, their melee strength is actually pretty fearsome yeah. if it rolls high. 
Especially when you're running into a pack of like four or five of them. <laughs> So Darren Dries is done opening boxes. Gonna just loop through Earth Cave. And head on out. Salty Fry. Essentially one floor behind at this point. Well, two floors behind now. Here comes speed bump mark one. The question on everyone's mind is, can we jump it? Because it's not a question of, like, if we're going to get through. It's like the sick airtime we'll get just dunking on this poor excuse of a boss. Fire 3 goes out for 117. Fire 3 goes out again for 164. Lich is adorable. It tries doing blaze. Doesn't do much. Outgoing swing, 4 hits 126, and then the ninja comes in with the Vorpal for 154. This speed bump is still here. Let's hit the gas a little bit. So melee doesn't do much. Lich swings and misses. Outgoing damage, 110. Down goes speed bump mark 1. Darren Dries has second ore blit at the 1 hour 39 minute mark. The disgrace of having to spend two turns, to two, full, uh, two rounds to take down Lich 1. The shame. I... I think that isn't so much the shame of not trying, it's just how strong Fade and Nuke are, and how much you miss them when they're not around. Let's see if Salty Fry can do any better. Swing! Four hits for 151. Incoming, one damage, slap. Outgoing fire three for 114. The ninja swings. Three hits, ten damage. Does ninja things. The red mage, three hits for 44. Salty Fry is also going to take a second round against the speed bump. Outgoing 3 hits for 16. Incoming Blaze does about the same Blaze damage it did to Darren Dries. 3 hits for 4 damage. Knight swings with the Ice Sword. 4 hits 127. Fire 3 goes out. For 182, down goes Lich 1. Salty Fry is about to light his fourth orb at the 1 hour 40 minute mark. Alright, now is just the final question. Will Topher be nice? Or will it be mean? I mean, we know one of the floors is going to suck. <laughs> yeah, just the water floor on its own might end up deciding this race if it really wants to. Tover, of course, is the great equalizer, but rarely do we get it advertised so well ahead of time. Doing some last minute gear jiggling. Yep. Go and defense sword on the ninja, vorpal on the knight, and ice sword on the red wizard. Sure. Um, if we're really committed to meat shield strats, um, that defense is going to be fine. But that I feel like I feel like spells are going to be that ninja's biggest problem rather than uh, melee attacks. And I think at some point we're going to want that defense to change hands over to the knight, which probably will happen once uh, after the after the ninja dies. But at that point, we'll, we'll see if that's too little, too late. Eh. It'll be fine. <laughs> I don't see that ninja lasting much past um, carry two. And then at that point, um, weapons will change hands and everything will be fine. And Darren Dry is getting all this lovely information regarding the lobsters and the Ger and the Gersharks. So, well, I think <laughs> I already had the information on the Gersharks. I think the lobsters might have been new information. Yep. Salty Fry able to get away from the banner, and there's an Iron Gall at the trap tile. Ooh. Ooh, and that good rolled a good touch. Absorb, though. Okay, time to bust out the magic. Ooh, you got lightning boy. cheese, right? Uh, I believe so. On the same level as fast, though, for whatever that's worth. I kind of like using a Vorpal against an Iron Gall. Because crits ignore Absorb, if we just power the crap out of this Vorpal-wielding knight, some of those hits will crit. We can conserve magic for future bosses. The problem is that spending fast and temper charges to get through an Iron Gall trap tile feels real bad. Yeah, yeah. But it might 
just be the most efficient option, so I kind of like the play. Oh, there's our second Ice Sword. Last ditch effort for Masa or some. Nope. We got our Ice Sword. This is fine. Stealing up the ninja. I make the make the most of it through the through this dive. Question in chat. Wait, we have no magic? So, Fade is not red learnable, and Nuke is somewhere... It's either 7 Gaia or 8. And here comes Darren Dries' Kraken 1. Let's... We're gonna do some melee shenanigans. We're gonna do... Wait. Yeah, no, we're gonna do some... We're gonna rely on the power of melee. Defense goes off. Kraken holds. Red Mage is held. Fast goes off. Fast goes off. We Both of our melee damage dealers have been fasted. Let's try some swinging. Swing with the Morpal and the Ninja. Six hits, 299. Swing with the Excal. Seven hits, is that 829? And that Kraken is still there. I don't think it's gonna be there much longer though. Slow hits the Ninja, doesn't matter. We're gonna try some more spells, but out goes Excal. Six hits, 435. Incoming damage, seven hits, 139. Outgoing Vorpal for 161. We're gonna fast up a Red Mage. Let's try some more melee. Fast goes off. Swing with the Vorpal. Six hits, 234. Swing with the Excal. Five hits, 457. Down goes Kraken, one for Darren Drives. That's the third orb lit. And as I was calling that, Salty Fry mowed over Speed Bump 2, showing it the respect it deserves. Honestly, I think it was the Lich 2 went down faster than Lich 1 did. <laughs> Probably. They're both not bosses. Change my mind. Alright, so Salty Fry at carry 2. We'll see... We'll see if uh, how, much, how much respect carry 2 deserves this time around. Carry 2 is usually to be feared. Um... The melee is pretty ferocious. Um, the average HP means we're not getting through this in one round usually. Uh, and what that means we're in danger of seeing more of the spell list, which is never a good thing for feed twos. But we start with lightning two. That's good news. That's real, real good news. Defense goes off. Power gauntlet goes off. We're going to fast the knight. Swing with the Vorpal as a test swing. Three hits, 25. Evasion is probably in our favor. No, that was an ice. That wasn't a purple swing. That was an ice sword swing. Oh, my apologies. Still three hits out of a red mage. That means evasion. Probably good for us. Swing with the purple for 604. It's still there. Swing with the ice sword for 18. Paunch. Two hits, two damage from the mighty black wizard. Swing. Four hits for 50 damage. Paunch. Two hits, two damage. Most consistent damage so far. Three hits for 18 from the ice sword and eight hits for 622 out of the purple. Down goes carry two. All right, now we get to this. Now for the floor of broken dreams that we get a hero run on. Never mind, everything's fine. Except for the there and there, waters. that's there's unrunnable waters that I mentioned before. Yep, time to bust out the black shirt and just really hope. Oh boy, yeah, they rolled high on. So the problem with this fight is that we don't have any of the tools to deal with it. We don't have Nuker Fade, so we can't rely on that. We don't have Ice 3, we can't rely on that. This black shirt mm, is probably the most damage we're going to get um, all round out of this fight. Uh, according to... Uh... Apparently chat's mentioned apparently Darren Rise doesn't have Excal either. Apparently he wasn't able to get that out of Sea Shrine. So, so he's rocking some defense strats too. That's fine. They got the Vorpal. That um, Excal would be better for Fiend 2s, but Vorpal is like, at the end of the day, we gotta kill Chaos, and Vorpal is the one we're gonna want for that, not Excal. Yeah, there's more waters.
Yeah, this this is gonna be a resource drain of a fight. There's only four of them this time, which is helpful, but that uh, that ninja's not looking too good. Yeah, at what point if the if the ninja goes down here, what do you, do you even bring it back up? Uh, yes for Kraken too. Sorry, yes for any boss, essentially, depending on how many um, life charges we have, which we should have a fair number. Yeah, still has a, has a, has three more. <laughs> and with Cure 4 being at level 2, we should have plenty of those as well. <laughs> Ooh, shoutouts to Random Mania 2 with the raid. Thanks a lot. Welcome to, uh, welcome to Not Fun Topher. Alright, Kraken 2. Take it. We get. Breaking out the fog twos. Got some defense going on, got some power bunk going on. <laughs> 515, not bad. Kraken breaking out a stun. Ooh, quad X attempt. No good. But another vorpal shot of 515 is good. Kraken had about a thousand health. The thing we can actually take away from that is that we can narrow Kraken's health range to between around 800 and 1,000. That quad X didn't work after around 500 damage, yep. um, but then 500 damage worked, so we can just kind of ballpark the hit points right there. That'll be good information if we have to do this dive again. And oh, we got ourselves a warbag! We got a robot! It's, a not, it's unrunnable, too! We're gonna try some fog two strats. We're gonna go with some defense. Incoming swing misses. We're gonna fast again. How are we gonna deal with our large robot friend? Are we gonna do tempers? This ninja doesn't have a lot going for it. We're Cast a saber. You don't see that very often. I like that for lack of better things to do with the ninja. The fog two is gonna be interesting. It'll if we can get enough of it layered on, it'll really dampen this Warmex um, melee power across the board. But we gotta start doing outgoing damage because we do not know what the spell and skill list looks like. Incoming Bane, down goes the ninja, down goes our red wizard. This is now a two-person... This is now a two-person fight, and that first swing was not that encouraging. Incoming Nuke, both Ooh. characters survive. That's one nuke out of the table, but 397, down goes our robot friend, and a lot of levels uh, for Darren Drives. That's going to fix all of his problems right now, I think. Yeah. Meanwhile, Salty Fry had to drain some more resources for an Iron Golf fight before, uh, before pulling Tia 2. All right, what are we doing with this Tia 2 fight? Here we go. How about some tempers? Some... We're going to dump all our resources into the night. We're going to use the ninja as an evade tank. Defense goes off, temper goes off, bomb goes off. Fire 3, incoming. Does fire 3 things, but a lot of damage to that black wizard. Fast goes off. We're going to try some more defense. Uh, we got to start swinging. The red wizard is also going to swing. The black wizard is going to do something. Defense goes off. Swing! 4 hits 820. We don't even get to see what the black wizard does because down goes Tia 2. Wow! Tia 2 paper one got one shot at... Here we go. Chaos. The big cheese. The grand poobah. I thought the big cheese was our tracker. Oh, it could be. I smudged my nose. But we're going to fire hose the last of our heal pots. And here we go. Pull in chaos at one hour, 52 minutes. Let's start with some defense on the dodge tank. We're going to fast up the shifted knight. Bonk. And some temper. We gotta get this knight online as soon as possible. Defense goes off. Fast goes off. Bonk goes off. Temper goes off. Chaos. 
punches the Black Wizard, but it's still there. We're going to try some defense. That Black Wizard is going to temper like its life depends on it. How about some bonk? And we're just going to let the Black Wizard go down. We need all power to this knight while we still can. Buffs are flying left and right. Incoming punch still connects to the ninja. Deals about half its health and damage. We're going to try some more uh, defense, some more tempers. Maybe a fog too. Swing. Eight what? hits for 1,374. Thunder wow. goes out, but it don't matter because we just need to swing that weapon again if we're good to go. Uh -huh. Fog two goes out. How about the ninja's gonna wait? Ninja doesn't even have to do anything anymore. Let's just swing. Uh, ice sword swing. Three hits, three damage. Big swing. Eight hits for 921. Chaos is still there. We've crossed base HP. How about a third swing? Eight hits for 1400, and boom goes the chaos. Salty Fry has finished in first place with an official SRL time of 1 hour, 53 minutes, and 37 seconds. A GG. GG. That was, yep, that was just buff up and swing away and chaos went down like a ton of bricks. Mm -hmm. If you want evidence that the Vorpal can be just as capable if you just give it a helping hand, this, Salty Fry put on the clinic for that. Um... You just, you just give it a fast, you give it a bucket of tempers, and then you swing, and suddenly it's like 1,500 damage sometimes. And then the other half of the time, it's like 700. Eh, it's fine. Um, we're going to see if we can get Salty Fry in here for an interview real quick. Well, Darren Dry's encountering our first Iron Call fight. Seeing just how absorb heavy it is. Yep, Iron Gall is the one Gall you don't want to melee. Mud Galls, melee him. Rock Galls, definitely melee him. Iron Galls, meh, bring the lightning. Well, lightning too is. Eh. But it's but well, we don't have lit three, so lit two is yeah. the best we got. Is better than melee, ish. But unfortunately, being level two, it's gonna um, consume some of our uh, some of our badly needed cure four charges. Oh yeah. Uh, but we are joined in the booth now by our winner, Salty Fry. GG, man. Thank you. So. so First question on my mind. Sea Shrine. Yeah, it was that was kind of my kind of me. My nemesis the whole race. And I liked it. I had so much fun there. I decided to exit out right when I got the Kraken as well, so I could do it one <laughs> extra time. Just to make it even more fun, right? <laughs> yeah, this would have been so this would have been so much better just in general had I not gone there to start with and had I not exited out there. Like overall this would have gone really good, I think, had I not done all that. So, um, take me through your party selection real quick. Uh, fighter, Thief, Red, Black. Thoughts? Yeah, I use the Fighter mainly to kind of just carry my party. The Thief, or Thief is just kind of there to help me run here and there. So sometimes he'll be dead, other times he won't be, depending on what I'm kind of planning on doing in whatever the dungeon is that I'm heading towards usually. So usually I'd like to have him dead when I'm kind of planning on doing my leveling. It's just mm -hmm. extra XP for the characters that I care about. Mm -hmm. And I, with the red, I'd just take the red mage over the white and kind of gamble. I'm going to find what I need in the slots that are available. Hopefully I find life. Hopefully I find exit. I mean, I would have been better off by never picking up exit because I never actually used it for anything relevant this seed. Like, I got it thinking, like, it might be useful if I went to ice, but I was going to have to gain a bunch of levels before I got a charge of that, so that wasn't at all useful. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think we ever... Did we ever see Fade? Uh, was was Fade um, level six? Fade, no, Fade was at a white locked slot, and I think it was level six. Yeah. Yeah. So Fade was uh, Fade was white locked, so that was unfortunate. We never did see Nuke at all. <laughs> yeah, it didn't seem like there was a whole lot of good spells at all really available, especially low levels at all. 
Bane is all right, I guess. Like, the whole reason I went to Sea Shrine is I'm thinking, all right, Bane actually works pretty good there, like, in terms of taking out the big packs of all of them. All of them are pretty vulnerable to that. So I figured I might be able to gain some levels when I went there the first time. No, everything was just kind of, I'm mean, getting stone touched by the lobsters. That was kind of quite a pain to start with. And yeah, everything else seemed like it was hitting ridiculously hard as well, so. Yeah, the stone touched lobsters, the Gersh sharks with thunder, is just, it was just not a good time. No, definitely the wrong time to head there at low level. Like, the other reason why I went in there as well is because I was thinking, I'm like, all right, I want to kind of gain 65k gold so I can go pick up that crown that was for sale over at the caravan as well. So I'm figuring, yeah, let's try to jump in here. Maybe if I get lucky, I'll find what I need in there. I can clear an orb at the same time and then pick up the crown and get out of here and never have to come back to this area. No, it didn't quite work out like that. Eventually, I went over to Ordeals, got the money there, and came back and got it. But still kind of played out, I guess, all right. And one information, bit of information we got from uh, Darren Drives, apparently uh, Excal was over at the Mermaids, though he wasn't able to walk in it. Yeah, I was tempted to head up there, but that's the thing, like, without Exeter Warp again, you're kind of walking it out, which really sucks. Like, getting up there is usually not too bad, but having to go all the way up and then all the way back just kind of sucks, so... But that definitely would have been nice to have. I mean, weapons were another thing that were few and far between. <laughs> I'm not someone that generally likes using the Borpal, but in this situation, it was like, well, I really guess I don't really have much other choice, to be honest with you. I mean, it's that or the Ice Sword, and frankly, if I start tempering up the Borpal, it's probably going to be a lot better than the Ice <laughs> you know, It certainly got the job done. Meanwhile, Terran Drives is at Kraken 2. Really, Kraken 2 and Tia 2 didn't really have much for health this time around. No, they fell over pretty quickly, that's for sure. They definitely had less than a thousand. Yeah, Tia 2 was especially paper. Um, Kraken 2, somewhere around base health, somewhere between, I think, 800 and a thousand, but... Um, yeah, not a whole lot kind of got in your way in terms of bosses. Um, Tell us about uh, Unrunnable Water Packs. Yeah, that's kind of a throwback to way back in the day before uh, Unrunnables were mm -hmm. shuffled. So that was always one of those things where you always were concerned about, right? So you always needed kind of a plan for them. Or back then you could even kind of plan since uh, the if you really paid attention, you could look at where the formations were going to be and possibly even just take extra fights on the fire floor if you knew you were going to get them on the water floor. But yeah, once I saw that they were going to be unrunnable, like I actually knew they were going to be unrunnable in TOFR as well, because if the one in uh, Sea Shrine is unrunnable, then the other one's going to be unrunnable as well, because that's the key side to it. So Yeah, I noticed that. I, prepared I, I, for no that. I noticed that one too, yeah. Yeah, so like having the black shirt was probably basically what saved me, because otherwise, like, killing those things would have been a real pain in the ass. They had a lot of health as well, so... And those were always one of those those encounters that you really had to plan for or have a good strategy for but way back in the day before Unrunnables were shuffled because that was always going to be one that you would run into on that floor. And like if you got six of them and they had a ton of health and you didn't have like Ice 3, they, they were a nightmare to take out. <laughs> All right, Darren Dries is on the air floor making his way towards Tia 2, having a bit of problems uh, with the Wiz Vamp Vampire pack. Uh, lost the thief again. See if we have the life charges to bring it back up, or if we're going to conserve. Uh, uh, no, we got plenty of life charges. Yeah, um, yeah, got plenty. To contrast with you, um, Darren Dries ran Fighter Thief Double Red. So he has um, kind of a lot of heal charge, or er, kind of a lot of life charges at the moment. Um, but uh, no potential access to nuke, and he had a much harder start, I think than you did just because he had to wait longer for his um, level 3 spell charges. I guess that makes sense. So at the same time, I was kind of using Bane to get my initial levels anyway, just kind of grinding outside of... Uh, mm -hmm. which one called? Where all the level 6 spells are there. Crescent, Crescent Lake. Yeah. yeah, you both ended up taking at least a bit of a grind. Though. Your Darren Drys ended up uh, heading into Volcano after a little bit while you were still grinding. Unfortunately, there wasn't much there, but that was that was uh, that was the start of our of our route divergence between the two of you. 
I wanted to get enough levels, so hopefully I could maybe have a chance at killing Carrie. Like, I figured if I went in there too low, that was never going to happen. Like, I knew I had hold at level 1, which can kind of help you out sometimes if it hits. <laughs> and actually, Carrie had, a, Carrie had a lot of HP as well. Like, I, my first uh, hit with my fighter was, like, for almost 300. I'm like, oh, okay, this is going to go well. And then it took, like, four or five more hits to actually take her down. Like, I don't know what she had, but it felt like she had well over 1,000 HP as well. Which yeah, kind of it, shocking. it felt like maximum or close to maximum. Yeah, like, every time I was swinging, I'm like, oh, this is going to be the one. And no, it wasn't until, like, yeah, you got up there around whatever it was. I don't even know. So... I have one question. That the uh, how nervous were you during the eye grind? Oh my god! I hate to interrupt your question real quick, but I just need to give a shout out to Darren Dries, who just successfully baned Tia Two. Not cracked, baned. Nice, nice done. Yeah. Well, first of all, well, obviously, I guess I got a three out of two sixty-five on my red mage there during that so like obviously like that's one of those things where you're just kind of hoping like since like i guess with both uh would have had to happen to two characters at that point in time which would have made me feel really crummy if that had happened but chances of that happening are obviously very slim so i just kind of rolled with it and just kind of went with it like it was nice finding the loot down there like i was like originally thinking like all right i, I was going to go all the way around an ice cave check the incentivized chest and I was hoping to find the loot there, but then instead I found it down there, and I was just going to do the eye grind on my walk back out as well, which was my original plan. But I just ended up backtracking and then just walking out. I was hoping to get some levels on my red mage, so hopefully he could survive a nuke if that came up in Topher, but luckily that never happened, and he didn't get anywhere near enough where he was going to survive a big roll on a nuke. So I just kind of had to hope instead. Yeah, so the incentivized chest and ice ended up being the herb, which led to the ruby, which led to something. We don't know what. Yeah, I figured as much at that point in time. I guess Opal Bracelet or Thor's Hammer or one of the Although in the uh, the three chests by that hole, apparently there was a sun sword there, which probably would have at least been helpful. Yeah, it would have been nice to have had as well. I was I considered maybe get checking that, but at the same time I just got my level just on my grind. Like the last thing I wanted to do was get into something that I didn't know what the hell was down there. And next thing you know, I'm dead or something like that and lose my whole grind. That feels terrible if that happens. So Darren Dries is healing up right at the steps to the chaos floor. Hopefully we can make it there without another encounter. Yeah, those. Having to deal with multiple iron gall fights—that's usually not, that's not something you have to do to put up with more uh, that often in Topher, mm -hmm. especially with one of them being at the at the Phantom Tile. That was an interesting spot for that, and they took quite a bit of resources to kill it as well. Like you don't have like nuke or fade or something like that to bust them down, so meleeing them is always tough. They tend to have quite a bit of armor as well. Darren so... drives close chaos. Chaos leads off with the thunder. So Darren Dries is buffing up. We got the double fast going on. We've got defense charges going off. We got some temper charges going off. Temper goes off, going into round three. Let's try a test swing. Eight hits for 364. Not bad, could be better. Let's try some more temper. Red mage swing, three hits, three damage. Incoming melee, down goes the top red wizard. We're gonna try, we lifted the wrong item. Incoming ink, does ink things. Outgoing ninja vorpal, eight hits for 79. How about a red mage swing, three hits, seven damage. We need more power, or we need oh, yes. more evasion. And they were some... at, I think they might be out of. He might be out of temper charges. That could be. There's, that's a, bad news. there's a nuclear. Down goes the ninja. Oh, yep. It's time for cure four. We need to keep this knight topped off. One final defense charge, just in case of melee. This might be, uh, this might be a uh, protracted fight. So let's go for it. What do we got left? We got one more cure four. We're gonna use it on the red mage. No, we're not. The red mage goes down. The final defense charge goes out. Let's try swing. Eight hits for 486. Incoming damage misses. Let's try again. Incoming damage misses. Outgoing. Eight hits for 729. We're going in the right direction. Incoming miss. Outgoing. Eight hit for 603. Chaos is still just throwing haymakers, but can't connect to anything. Eight hits for 439. Tries a nuclear. We shrugged that off. Eight hits for 385. Let's try one more final swing. Eight hits for 699. Down goes Chaos. Darren Drives finishes in second place with an official SRL time of... Of... 
he hasn't actually GG'd yet. <laughs> With an official SRL time of... Two hours, no. seven minutes, and 45 seconds. And we are joined in the booth by Darren Dry's GG Man. Thank you very much. So, and um, we are joined... First, uh, talk us through your party real quick. Uh, Fighter Thief Double Red. What was the uh, the strategy behind that? I knew that Salty Fry is a really good runner, and I knew that I was going to need to be aggressive. I was probably a little more aggressive than I uh, necessarily needed to be, but I wanted to get, you know, I like the Double Reds because they have the melee and a lot of defense, and if you don't get most of the spells in the first four levels, you're probably not going to get them along the way. Mm -hmm. So, um, in the early game, uh, I think our first route divergence was when both of you got to Crescent Lake um, and saw that there was kind of nothing there to help you. No cash, no levels, no nothing. Um, Salty Fry took a grind outside Crescent Lake, but uh, tell us what was going through your mind with your first volcano dive. I was really just hoping that there would be money or something like a decent sword or something to be able to get me moving forward in Volcano and didn't find anything too great. I think I got like an opal shield or opal gauntlet out of there that got me some money to get going, but there wasn't anything really great to go off of. Yeah, unfortunately there wasn't anything high end or maybe a loose item in there to key, to really get the ball rolling there, son. I, 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 I appreciate the, uh, the effort going, going for that aggressive I aggression. It just didn't really pay off for you this time. Yeah, I was, I was really just going to pull out the stops. I wasn't expecting it to be that close, especially after my marsh dive came up with nothing. And I was like, okay, now I'm an extra 10 minutes behind. And, but you know, that was just a weird seed. The routing was really weird throughout it. So, um, one question for that is, so I, we saw you try Volcano Armory, that didn't quite pan out. We saw you try um, Marsh, that didn't quite pan out. Was the dip into Earth, at that point, were you look, um, what were you looking for most in there? Um, I was looking for, anytime that I go onto Earth 1, especially that early, I'm looking for either a good spike tile to get some levels, because I knew that I was really under-leveled at that point, and there's three of them on that floor, or like a decent sword and decent money, but I found the flame sword and there was like 9,000 gold next to it, which I was really happy with, but I wanted to, I didn't want to go back in and try and get it, because it wasn't worth the time spent for just the flame sword. Yeah, unfortunately, that was where you found got your information about the lobsters, too. Yeah, yeah, and I think, yeah, that was just... All of that early game was tough, and then it was the choice of where do I go in the, on the northern continent in order to move forward. So one thing that was noted in uh, the chat, apparently, I, I, for, I don't remember which one of you ran afoul of them, but apparently sorcerers had their vanilla death touch. Yeah, I found that one. I was lucky I missed that one, I guess. <laughs> I saw the stone touch, though, that's for sure. Yeah, I think they killed my thief, and I wasn't sure at first if they just did enough damage or else it was death touch, but I'm pretty sure it was death touch. Yeah, because sorcerers usually aren't much for actually dealing damage physically. All right. Um, well, it's been an action-packed race, but I think we're going to move this over to final thoughts. Uh, we'll start with our winner, Salty Fry. Uh, I'll just say thanks a lot for the restream, for the tracking. Uh, happy to be happy to have won. Uh, best of luck going forward, Darren, and I'll see you guys next week. All right, and uh, Darren Dries, final thoughts? Uh, congratulations, Salty Fry. Good job tonight. Um, it felt really good to bane that Tiamat 2 at the end, but uh, other than that, it was fun, and you know, it was a really, really good seed, and thanks again for the restream and for tracking, and 
uh, commentary. I'm sure that I'll learn a lot by watching this video back. Uh, Melee Wizard, final thoughts? Uh, sometimes it's not Topher that's mean. Sometimes it can be Sea Shrine. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I'd like to thank Randomania for hosting us. I'd like to thank uh, the unsung hero of tonight, uh, Dengwu. Not only restreaming our race, but the race immediately before this. That's props to you, man. Uh, I'd like to thank Cheesenator for doing all the tracking. I'd like to thank my uh, comrade in arms, Mr. The Melee Wizard. Um, coming up later tonight, uh, actually happening right now over on Speed Gaming 6, we have JLo versus Rojo. Uh, that's sure to be a match worth watching, but uh, don't forget to follow Randomania and Speed Gaming through the next coming weeks for all the Final Fantasy Spring Tournament uh, shows. Um, until then, my name is Lucid Football, and everyone have a good night. We'll see you next time. <laughs>